Solution Uncle, how are you? Thank you for the show. I saw the truck driver's confession. A similar incident happened to me. My name is Solomon Moyana. I am from the mining town of Shawane in Zimbabwe. Grew up in my glass compound living with my parents who were employed by Shabani Mine. Now living at my nephew's plot near Gweru. His name was Terence. Terence moved to United Kingdom in 2001 and passed away last year after a short illness. He worked at Allied Construction offices in Kwekwe. Allied Construction was owned by British owners. The owners decided to close in Zimbabwe after the land resettlement by the government. Terence was so loyal to his employers. Given so many awards of excellence by the company, the owners decided to move to United Kingdom with him. One of the commerce directors, Prince Flix, owned this plot which he left in Terence's name. Local elderly people alleges that in the plot many years ago, there was a secret small pool. The pool was reserved by the traditional leaders. During the time of colonial era, Daniel Flix, Prince's grandfather, used the power to take the land, then destroy the pool. Okay, let's go back to my story. I am staying at the plot with my wife and kids. In 2013, Terence brought me two commuter omnibuses. From then, I was earning a living commuting. At some time this year, I was hired by a white government church to Harare. They were going for a Passover. I ferried and left them there. They were going to spend the following three weeks worshipping, so I had to return on my own. I decided to use Rusapir Murambinda Road because I had some personal errands to run in Marondera. After the Dombotombo turn off in Marondera, a lady was standing by the roadside. She waved her hand. I stopped the vehicle since it was my hustle to carry people. Light brown in complexion, he had a slim sex body. She was wearing a white long dress covering her legs to the feet. The lady tried to greet me. I said, yeah, you get inside. I might arrested by city council parking officers here. She got inside, telling me that she was going to Murambinda, but she has luggage she had left near Sari Farm. I told her that I won't drive back to Sari since I was driving from Harare. Why can't I go back to where I am coming from? The lady offered to pay money, which was five times more than of the church congregants I left in Harare. I agreed in a Kamban, we drove back to Sari. After Sari turn off, we turned to the right. She ordered me to stop at the bridge. This led me to have so many questions in mind. How can this person just leave this entire luggage alone? How can she leave it exactly on the bridge? Are there no cars here to hire? Or even look for a car here instead of traveling? to Marondera to look for transport. How can she offer this lot of money to these light goods? Where is she coming from? She don't even suit to be from this place, but she asked me to help her putting the goods into the Toyota highest I was driving. There was five rows of curtains, a white bag, and 10 times 25 kgs rice bags. More questions rang in my mind, but at last I thought she had stolen these items somewhere. I only needed money, so I did not care whether the goods were stolen or not. We drove back to Marondera. Nobody talked, only listening to music from the radio. In Marondera, I brought fuel. We proceeded with our journey. It took about five hours to Buera. To increase more questions, the lady told me to stop at a bridge. I stopped and helped her dropping her goods. Returned into the car, looked at the view mirror. At the view mirror, I saw nothing. This shocked me. Where did the lady go? Stopped the car to see with my natural eyes. Yes, the lady has disappeared. This totally disturbed me. Returned into the car and drove to Gweru. The following morning, I woke up to see my commuter omnibus is stolen. Reported at the police and nothing was recovered. 
went to consult a traditional healer she told me that the lady i ferried from Marunda to Buera was a mermaid the mermaid used to dwell in the secret pool on my plot fellow people it's getting i lost my job my commuter omnibus truly the spiritual world exists let's dedicate ourselves to god how are you solution uncle I am a married woman age 33 grew up in Soweto my father died before I was born and my mother passed away when I was 1 year old grew up in poverty living with my grandmother we end living by begging standing at robots and road intersections every day begging for food and money from travelers one day a black van stopped on our front there it comes a young man by then he seem to be from 25 to 30 years myself i was 16 years he greeted us in a very polite way and gave us 20000 rands told my mother that she should go back home with me start a small business so that she can pay my school fees the guy was so caring and kind we returned home but we didn't know that there were a gang of thieves so the guy giving us the money on our way home we met the men they told us to give them money at gun point including the money we begged from the other travelers they raped me after taking away the money we returned home in tears the fact that she witnessed me being raped granny was irritated to the most extent she started to be feeling not okay every day a week after the rape incident she passed away post mortem confirms it was heart failure that was a major blow to me how can i lost my grandmother my one and only relative it took time for me to adjust there was nothing to do besides going back to the streets and start begging again for a living i returned to the streets it took about 3 hours with no one giving me any sandy before the same black bands stood in my front it was that guy who gave me 20000 rands fashionably he looked surprised by seeing me he said it's you again yay i gave your grandmother money for your school fees Why are you still in the streets? Where is your grandmother? How is she? I started crying when he said talked about my grandmother. He said let's get inside this car. It took me about 2 hours to be able to tell him my story. The guy was so good and he has patience waiting for me to be able to tell him what was happening. As I was narrating, he started crying too. told him everything what had happening but i never mentioned about the rap incident he took me to his home started telling me his story he said he has divorced his wife after quoting him red handed we became more closer and closer as time goes on three days later we suddenly started kissing and fell in love get engaged at the church the following month but i didn't know that those thieves that is raped me they have impregnated me the day i started meeting with my husband and the day i gave birth were not matching at all but they were matching to the day i was raped a man who raised me from dust a man who raised me from death i don't want disappointing him i loved him so much on 1 january 2011 i gave birth to twins two bouncing baby boys a new number called me it was one of the robbers i don't know where he got my number from threatening to tell my husband the truth told me to meet him at the lodge here in town i went there because i don't want the truth to be revealed to my husband he raped me again he did it several times before he passed away in 2020 of my four kids only one is the child of my husband now seeing the thief in my dreams saying bring back my kids to my family truly the thief is the father of my three kids they look alike uncle i don't know what to do i love and respect my husband so loving 
and the king is so kind but the thief is threatening to kill me fellow africans please help me i'll be glad if you read my confession thank you uncle